Bacon College, established in 1880, is located in Muskogee, Oklahoma, and is a historically Native American-serving institution. The college recently lost a civil case in Muskogee District Court that resulted in a $1 million judgment against Bacon because it did not pay a construction company for work done. The link to Muskogee Media's coverage on that story is in the description of this video. A complaint concerning Bacon College's accreditation has been filed with the Higher Learning Commission. The Higher Learning Commission is an independent corporation that grants accreditation to degree-granting post-secondary educational institutions in the United States. Accreditation is necessary to ensure that credits that students take at a college can be transferred to other institutions and are of a certain quality level. HLC has a process in place for students, faculty, staff, or members of the public to submit a complaint if they believe there are problems with the institution's ability to meet the criteria of accreditation. Muskogee Media was provided a copy of the complaint filed by former Bacon College employee Kendall Scott. The 81-page complaint paints a picture of an institution in crisis. It contains examples of Bacon faculty, staff, and students violating policy without repercussion. According to the complaint, Bacon's finances are in ruins, with payroll, benefits, and basic utilities not being paid for months, if at all. Events in the complaint cover the time range spanning March 2021 to March 2023. The complaint alleges that Interim President Dr. Nikki Michael dissolved all committees except the Executive Committee. Incidents involving students' belongings being damaged or stolen are detailed. The complaint also alleges that Bacon relies heavily on recruiting student-athletes and Bacon College coaches regularly promise amenities that they knew the school could not provide. In addition, the complaint contains the resignation letter of Rhonda Barron, an educator at Bacon. Quote, Without regret, I am submitting my letter of resignation. In the 22 years I have been an educator, I have never experienced the lack of transparency I have experienced at Bacon College. Since the day I walked into Bacon, I felt the protective need to safeguard all that Bacon stood for. The history behind Bacon and the native Indian students that have come here since 1880. Since the day I walked into Bacon, I have also been immersed in a political power struggle that has affected students and staff alike. This fight was not mine. I was constantly being approached to side against the administration at that time, Ferlin Clarks. From the very first day, it felt like an explosive place to work. Since the removal of Dr. Clark, it has only grown worse. More details of current administration abuse will be sent to the appropriate agencies. I can no longer stand by and see the injustice I have witnessed here. From the lack of resources to the mismanagement of students, finances, and staff, the deceit is deep. I am ashamed for not stepping up earlier and saying something sooner. To the board, you are responsible for making Bacon something to be proud of. I am embarrassed to tell people I work at Bacon. The buildings are rotting in front of your eyes, yet we still charge students to live in substandard buildings with mold. The library can't get library software to actually check out books, and half the collection has been left to decay in the basement of Samuel Richards Hall. Bacon can't get credit at local stores because they know you don't pay your bills. You have the power to step up and see what is happening, yet I have never met any of you. You fail as a board of directors. You have not invested in making Bacon a better place to work and attend as students. I frankly don't understand what purpose you do serve. You hear what you want to hear, but you do not come and see what you would see. As a Chickasaw citizen and a proud Native American, I chose to stand up now and say something when I see something. A detailed letter of abuse going on at Bacon will be submitted to the Chickasaw Times, Muskogee Phoenix, and to the Chickasaw Nation immediately following the submission of this resignation letter. Sincerely, Rhonda Barron. End quote. Barron submitted her letter to an online news outlet, Muskogee Now, and it was published under the headline, Educator Alleges Crumbling Conditions, Warring Staff, Financial Struggles at Bacon on April 26, 2022. The complaint also details how Bacon was fined $200,000 for Clary Act violations. The Clary Act is a federal law that requires colleges and universities to report campus crime data, support victims of violence, and publicly outline the policies and procedures they have to improve campus safety. Muskogee Media contacted the Department of Education to verify the fines, 
but was told that the process could take up to a month. Muskogee Media spoke with Baycone Interim President Dr. Nikki Michael and Chief Operations Officer Dr. Leroy Thompson about the allegations outlined in the report. We definitely uh, have had previous administrations that put the, the school in jeopardy, um, and there's a, a very large amount of debt, yes. Dr. Michael had previously served as Baycone's Executive Director of Indigenous Studies and Curriculum under President Ferlin Clark from August 3rd 2020 until March 2021, when she was placed in the interim president position. When I came into the position, and mind you, I was a, a chair of the American Indian Studies, um, I was asked to step into this position. I did not seek it, um, and I really wouldn't wish this on anybody either. <laughs> it's a very huge task, and um, it's been one day after another of kind of unearthing and unlayering the depth of uh, some of the past wrongdoings and misadministration. Kendall Scott, former Baycone Senior Director of Student Support Services and author of the HLC complaint, spoke to Muskogee Media about why he filed the complaint. Well, when I left Baycone College, I was getting a lot of uh, emails and text messages from students saying, hey, um, they're not taking care of us. So when Furlan was in charge, we had shared governance, executive committee, uh, and, and a committee for uh, student violations. But when Nikki got in charge, she disbanded all the committees except for the executive committee. So basically, Nikki came in and disassembled all of the, all the regulations that we'd typically follow. Um, for the HLC, um, during the probation period, we were put on probation and we needed to rewrite all of our policies and procedures. And we spent the whole summer prior before Furlan leaving to rewrite the faculty handbook, student handbook. Um, and we didn't get to the athletic handbook yet, but yeah, we had re rewritten them and then we didn't follow them. As soon as Nikki got into charge, we didn't follow policy and procedures for the student handbook or the faculty handbook. Bacon had previously been put on accreditation probation by HLC in February of 2019. The college spent the next three years working to attain HLC compliance and officially regained accredited status in February 2022. According to Scott, Dr. Clark's leadership as Bacon president was instrumental in getting Bacon off of accreditation probation with the Higher Learning Commission. HLC has responded to Scott's complaint with a letter stating, Upon initial review of your complaint, HLC determined that the matter regarding Bacon College raises potential concerns regarding the institution's compliance with the criteria for accreditation and certain other HLC requirements. Due to these potential concerns, HLC will conduct a further review of the institution based on your complaint. HLC will forward your complaint to the institution for formal review and response. The institution will then have 30 days to respond to the concerns in writing and provide appropriate supporting evidence. HLC will review the institution's response to determine what action, if any, is needed based on the evidence. The Commission, however, is unable to provide any further updates on the status of the review of your complaint beyond the information included here. If HLC's continued review of this complaint leads to a formal evaluation of the institution, including the scheduling of an interim report, focused visit, or other such evaluation, it will be published on the institution's Statement of Accreditation Status. Muskogee Media will have continuing coverage of this developing story.